And hello, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Arthur Showcase, the podcast where we do just that. We showcase uh, published authors, bloggers, and book publishers. And so today we have another great artist for you today. Her name is Jennifer Manissa. How are you doing today? Good. Last name is pronounced Messina, Jennifer Messina. I'm doing great. Yes. Uh, I do apologize. (laughs) I never get these last names, uh, some of these last names correct. I do apologize. Uh, So uh, first of all, let everyone know who you are. Yes, I'm Jennifer Messina. I'm a singer, actor, model, influencer. Um, But one of my COVID projects that I did is I wrote a book called Aggressive. Honey, it's assertive. And it's a self-help book about how to be more forward in life. So um, published it back in 2020. And I just came out with a second edition of it. Revamped, rewritten, new cover, a little bit more clarity. And the hard book cover even comes with a journal in the back so you can reflect on what you read. Um, So when people, so when people say that they are an influencer, what does that actually mean? So for me, um, brands will give me products. I will make videos for them and I will encourage my followers to purchase those products or reflect on things or, you know, change things in their lifestyle. So that's why like things like my book are very helpful. They influence people to be, more forward or um, more assertive in their life. So what what kind of brands do you, uh, so what kind of brands do you like represent? Well, I do a little bit of everything. So um, I'll do clothes. I have done furniture. I've done like health and fitness things. Um, I end up starting my own lip gloss brand because I was doing so many product placements. I decided to build my own business. So do you get a lot of free products and services when you do that? I do. And I do get commission too, but um, I don't pick anything unless I believe in it. So my followers know that I'm honest and going to tell you the truth about it. So if I don't like the product, I'm just going to return it. Um, so how, how does someone get into uh, that type of uh, work? Well, first, to start with having a good social media presence, and that takes time. That takes you posting every day or posting every other day. That takes you engaging with other accounts, following accounts that are similar to what you are trying to put out there, what your niche is. And then um, with time, people start to like what they see and Um, The followers will come and the engagement will come and the social media algorithms will go up and then you just got to capitalize and invest in it. So, but really it starts with a small page with zero followers and it, it can get up there. You just got to keep trying and and adding to the system. Is, is, uh, can that also be true? uh, Maybe like being a podcaster. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, my medium is a little bit more uh, visual on social media, but your medium is more audio on podcasting. So if you're putting out podcasts regularly and you're commenting on other people's podcasts and engaging on social media, you'll be on your way up too. Um, the, re- the reason why, I, you know, ask is that, you know, uh, in the world of podcasting, I mean, I'm not trying to be an influencer. I just want uh, I just want people to have a platform to where, you know, they can be themselves and they can share their stories, and you know they can just put themselves out there. That's why I started, you know, this podcast it has nothing to do it has nothing to do with me. You know, if people, you know, want to label me as an influencer, that's fine. Uh, mm-hmm. But that's not why I am in this. Uh, that's not why I do what I do. Makes sense. You're out there to help other people build up their brands. But that is your brand. Your brand is helping others and promoting them and creating creating this awesome, open, creative space. So 
congratulations on that. Thank you. Now we we have talked about some. So for this particular podcast, we uh, it's called the Author Showcase, and so that's exactly what we do. You know, we put people out there that you know need a platform to let others know who uh, you know who they are and you know what they have you know, written. So, you know, that's obviously why you're, you know, on here to, you know, to get yourself out there. So about the, the so tell us a little bit more about uh, the book that you have written. So it has 11 chapters in it. It is a short read, so you can get, get it done in, in a day and get what you need out of it. We did that on purpose so that, um, you can quickly gain some information and be able to apply it. Because the idea is everything I teach you about my opinion and how I work through my life and my relationships, I want you to read it and try to apply it in a way that fits in your life. So it talks about everything from letting kids be quote unquote bossy, letting them, you know, be more assertive and tell you how how they feel and, and be honest from what to do on the first date um how to win your boss over but still have that confidence and control in everything you do and I think the most interesting chapter is how do you change people's perceptions um of long-term relationships that feel like they can walk all over you so there's a little bit of everything for every age in there so is it so when you talk about relationships are you talking about uh, personal relationships, uh, business relationships, can that be applied to both of them? All, everything is covered. So um, I think the topic I speak the least about is probably like the parent to child relationship, but it talks a lot about, you know, how to talk to your subordinates, how do you talk to your superiors, um, how to talk to family friend relationships, how to talk in romantic relationships. So it's all about how to be forward and assertive, not aggressive, not mean, not rude, but forward. And this is my point and having control of your own situation and your own um, things that you want to put out there. I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm a, what you call a community organizer. I'm an, I'm an, act, I'm an activist advocate and so I deal with a lot of politicians, you know, so people ask me, well, you know, well, what do you do for a living? I say that I strategically get on other people's nerves. Yes. Yes. We, we talk about that in a chapter called flowering the commands, as in how do you tell your boss what to do without telling your boss, like, like they're a subordinate to you? How to put oh. a little fluff, how to how to like get someone to do something in a timely amount of manner without being rude or being like the boss over someone. Right. Cause you know, like sometimes I will go in, sometimes I like go to City Hall or I'll go to the state house. And you know, I you know, I hear people talk, you know, right? And you know, they're like really rude, getting ready to fight, you know, and you know, there's the cops getting ready to put them out. Yeah. Seen that, uh, I seen that a lot. But, you know, when I go to City Hall, you know, uh, I, I would get into the door fast enough. The security guard was like, uh, what kind of trouble are you getting in today? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, why would you say that? I mean, like these folks literally like shiver in their boots you know, whenever I walk into City Hall. And I don't do that often. And that's by design. Right. You know, because I told the mayor of my city where I live in, I said, I don't even have to be here to know what, you know, what you and your uh, colleagues are up to. Because I got eyes and ears all over the city. You don't know who they are. And you don't know what I know. So I'm watching y'all. So I'm y'all, watching even, y'all. I'm, I'm watching y'all. So even though I'm not there, I'm watching y'all. And then when I do, you know, come up to City Hall, you know, they'll say, what kind of trouble are you getting into today? And I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I said, all I'm doing 
is coming here to get some information. I'm not trying to, I don't know why people think that I go to these places, you know, to start trouble. You know, I guess my, perception. yeah, my reputation precedes me, you know. Uh, so you ever, so I'm sure you're familiar with John Lewis. Yeah. You know, right, who, you know, who said that, uh, that we should get into good trouble, yeah, necessary actually, trouble. I was okay. about to quote that. <laughs> You're going to get in any trouble being good trouble, but right. still cause some trouble. So I, I guess for that, you know, uh, you know, people have labeled me as an influencer, even though I don't, you know, consider myself to be an influencer because I don't have the you know, the thousands of followers, you know, you know, of influencers that, you know, I, you know, kept up with over the years. I, you know, I'm not there yet, you know, but I still have a following, nevertheless. And I think you have the activist side of influencer, because influencing, I would say, is like the big umbrella for like, what spoke are you? And definitely you got the activism side. So, yeah, so I, I heard that term, you know, being thrown around, you, you, you know, a lot, but what's really an influencer? Makes sense. Right, I, so. I would say it's someone who, I mean, well, I hate to use a word in explaining it, but it's someone who influences others to do whatever they're putting out there, whether it's good or bad. So, you know, every activist is an influencer. You're, you're convincing other people what you're saying. You're convincing people to do something, to buy something, to believe in something. You know, like, you know, like for, I, I'll give you a couple examples. Uh, here in Alabama, the governor here in Alabama uh, had raised uh, the gas tax. And, you know, a lot of people was upset with that, right? So one day I just posted on social media, hey, wouldn't it be great if we just boycott the, uh, the service stations, right? You know, didn't think nothing of it. Sometime, right. sometime later, I got uh, 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 a direct message from uh, a local TV reporter. Wow. It was like, can, can you like explain that? You know, you know, can you like go into detail, you know, on that? And it turned out to be, you know, an interview. You know, I was just saying, you know, what would it be like if we boycott, you know, the service stations? I mean, your words have an impact. You know, I, I didn't think any, you know, I didn't think anything, of, I didn't think anything of it, you know, but, you know, I was just saying, you know, what would it be like if, because I, I firmly believe in this, okay? Uh, like take these corporations for example, take these politicians and corporations for example. You know, everybody talking about this thing about you know inflation, right? It's, it's really not inflation. It's like people just being greedy, right? People just right. being absolutely greedy. That's what it is, you know. But no one wants to call it that, you know. You know, we'll just be politically correct and say that. You know, it's inflation. I'm like, nah. Now nah, it's you know, nah. You know, you know, people are being greedy. Everybody want their cut, right? Right. Okay. So that's what I've been saying. Next thing I know, you know, I got people on both sides of the aisle, you know, you know, coming at my throat. And actually, you know, we're having this interesting conversation, interesting thread. I'm like, oh, I see. I see. I got your attention. Yeah. Okay. He said, oh, I see I got your attention. You know, that's, it's by design because I want people to, you know, I really want people to, you know, open up their minds and think critically. Yes. Because that's a real problem, you know, that we have. And no one wants to think critically, you know, anymore. We, uh, you got influencers for that, you know, that tell, you know, that tell us that, you know, you shouldn't think critically, mm. you know, that other people, you know, that you're not even allowed to think for yourself. I'm like, that's crazy. But, 
they're they're getting that attention though. You know, like you said, what if it's, you know, good or bad? What if I'm convincing someone, you know, to do something or I'm convincing someone to uh, purchase a product or service? That, you know, the same thing is involved. But like you said earlier, you know, you can't be arrogant, you can't be rude. Uh, got to be forward you, and you got to be right there with your point. Right. Yeah. Just, just, just get to the point. And so that's where you find yourself at, you know, and what you do, right. But not on, you know, we're on, obviously we on two, uh, you know, different sides of the spectrum when it comes to influencing. But I think that the, the, the foundation is still there. Uh, you know, is it safe to assume that that's true? Yes, I wouldn't say we're a hundred percent on the opposite sides. I do a lot of mental health activism. Um, I want people. I want people to have human rights, and I want people to understand that you're allowed to go through things or have um, diagnoses and and live a great life. Like it's nothing to be ashamed of. Go out there, go get help. Go, do not feel alone. Live another day. So, I mean, not everything is just product placements. Even in my music, I talk a lot about mental health. I talk a lot about my own journeys. My book more points towards the, um, the aftermath or the success rate of what happens when you take care of yourself is you put yourself out there, you put your foot down and you be forward. So everything in my brand, it, it kind of points towards being the best version of yourself and what I can do to help you through my life experiences. Well, I'm, I'm going to get to the book, you know, in a moment, but it's funny that you mentioned about, you know, your singing career, because every time you turn on the radio, what's the main, what's the main topic that everybody talks about, you know, when you hear songs on the radio, is that four letter word? Can't say I knew. Oh, uh, you are? Are you sure? Yep, I'm sure. Is that everybody is searching for it? It's a four-letter word. It starts with an L. Are you talking about love? <laughs> yep, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Just about every song that you hear on the radio, you know, you know, that's the subject. You don't hear you know, uh, like, a, you know, a whole lot of other subjects, you know, I mean, you may have songs about cheating. Right. You know, or, you know, back in my day, you know, when I was in college, you know, if you don't want uh, anyone to know that you're cheating, you say that you're creeping. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, love is a very emotional topic. Yeah, I'm, I you know, I'm really showing... You know, I'm really telling people my age. <laughs> I'm really telling people my age, but um, but for you, I guess it's kind of, but for you, I guess it's kind of, you, you know, different. You know, every now and then, you you know, you get one of those inspirational songs, you know, that 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 come on, you know, the radio about, you know, there's a better version of you. Uh, you know, you can do anything that you put your mind to. Uh, is that the route that you're taking in your musical career or? Um, I would say closer to that route. It's not 100% always about being a better person. Sometimes it's about my falls in life and sometimes it's about my struggles in life. But mm -hmm. I, I think even my sadder songs, I hope that my fans take it and say, okay, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one feeling this. So what, what are the things that you talk about in your music? I talk about mental health topics. I talk about depression. I talk, I do talk, I have talked about relationships before. Um, I talk about growing and finding my best self and how my future will define me, not my past will define me. I have a song named Time Heals Everything that talks about, um, you know, if you put in the work, let time do the rest of the work. 
you know, I, I have songs about being lonely and how, how sad it is and how you feel so alone, but there's still a bright side at the end of the day or like about healing. So it's a little bit of everything, but the whole idea is that like, I want people to see my vulnerability of, yeah, I'm a human being too, but you know, it doesn't have to define you. We can move forward from all the terrible things we've been through. Is it rare for, is it rare that those type of subjects being talked about, you know, in songs, you know, considering the, the climate of music, you, you know, today where, you know, they're talking about love and relationships, you know, all the time. Do you find that to be out of the box, out of the norm? Not necessarily there. I mean, if you look at a lot of like Spotify or Apple Music, you'll find there's a lot of artists that talk about topics other than love. I think love is like the biggest topic on the radio because most of the bigger stars are out there singing about love. But I mean, everyone's talking about everything. You just got to go find your niche and go find your band that's talking about it. I mean, for me, I'm not trying to necessarily be outside of the box. I'm just trying to show my fans that this is me. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. And I hope you get something out of what I've learned. So who is your audience as far as your music is concerned, or you being an influencer, or even your book, which we will talk about in a few minutes? Any, anyone or everyone, really. It's My audience doesn't necessarily have an age genre. I mean, I think a, a more elderly audience will prefer less pop music and more of like a classical or music from their time. The younger generation probably likes the sound of my music better, but I mean, the topics can apply to anyone at any age, whether you're going through breakups or hard times through life or you're struggling with depression or anxiety, or even if you're struggling with addiction, like my songs will help you. And those topics don't have an age. Uh, what about... Uh... What about someone who's from like the late baby boom era or maybe Gen X? Yeah, it can apply to them too. It's just, it's really about the person and the personality and less about the age and the generation that they came from when it comes to my music. Um, any musicians that influence you to, uh, to sing or uh, you write your own songs too? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, so are there like any singers, songwriters that have an impact on, on your singing career? Uh, I mean, my influences were always, you know, Whitney Houston and Christina Aguilera and Gloria Estefan, Shakira. Beyonce, J Lo, like those powerhouse independent woman um, type of personalities, those big belters like Celine Dion, those were always my influences growing up. Oh, okay. Um, uh, you know, with the various hats, you know, that you wear, uh, what influenced you to go in those different areas? Just wanted to try new opportunities and um, build up my brand. I mean, some of the biggest brands in the world, they're not just one thing. They're multiple things and they're multiple successful things. So that's the thing is like Messina Glam lip gloss is all about looking your best and feeling like you're awesome and rocking your lip gloss. And the book is all about how, how to talk and how to make better relationships. The music is about reminding you that we all go through things and encouraging you and inspiring you to be the best version of yourself. I mean, the whole Messina brand is about who are you? Let's accept what happened in your past and let's be the best version of ourselves moving forward. Feel good about yourself. Okay, let's let's break that down. What is the Messina brand? That is the Messina brand. It feel good about yourself, accept the past, and grow to move on. And how do you, you know, how do you uh, 
um, let me see if I got this right. So how do you present that brand? Uh, like I just said, like the lip gloss, you wear it and you feel good about yourself. You feel like you got a pop in color. You go to the club, you go to the bar, you go to a nice restaurant. Um, even if you're just going out for a walk, it's supposed to be bright, vibrant and make you feel happy and make you feel confident. Um, whatever's on the inside, bringing it out forward and making you feel good. The music, like I said, is all about um, accepting what has happened and moving forward and being, you know, like understanding that you're not alone in this world. And the book is about how to build better relationships, how to speak better, how to be more forward, how to tell, be more in control of your situation. So that those are all things that encompass in the Messina brand and like all the product influencing it's just like you know we influence um you know th things that'll make you feel happy or things that will make your body feel better or like different exercise routines or maybe there's like a workout machine that you know will advertise that's like this is good fitness and these are things that you can do uh, we recently did some advertising on a portable blender that we did like great fruit smoothies that like really make you feel great and like drinking healthy supplements with them. So that's, um, that's seen a brand just, you know, accept the past and be the best version of yourself moving forward. Would you say that your personality is also a part of your brain? I mean, absolutely. My personality is my brand. Like I'm a very blunt forward person. My book is very, blunt and forward you know I'm gonna tell you how it is and and that's that and my music is not beating around the bush either so really like most parts of my brand really do cycle around my personality so you're just like you're blunt you're straightforward yep with, I mean without I'm being a, with without being rude and arrogant I mean, I'm a Sicilian woman from New England, so I have to tell you how it is. Uh, yes, I I uh, have met uh, have met quite a bit of individuals who like live in New York um, and like Connecticut, and yes, uh, you know they have that blunt, straightforwardness, you know, type of personality. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if you really want someone to like hold you accountable, they are it. <laughs> because yeah, that's, that's like that's a, me. they they would definitely, you know, hold you accountable. Um, you ever thought about being an accountability coach? I mean, I guess I am through my brand, but I'm not really interested in coaching people one on one. I'm more interested in coaching people on a macro level through books, music, and other items under our, our brand. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, you know, that would work. I know that, you know, uh, the, the traditional, you know, way that we coach people, you know, may not necessarily, you know, fit your personality, um, you know, but there are accountability coaches, they do exist. Mm -hmm. you know, kind of like your accountability, uh, accountability partners. Uh, uh, so you mentioned who your audience is. Uh, now I, I also, you know, met people that are doing similar, uh, similar work, you know, than you do, especially women and most of their art, most of their, you know, audience. You know, it's women, they're about uh, women empowerment, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Do you, uh, would you consider yourself uh, to be in that same type of category or you just like, you know, you're broad, you're, you know, you're just out there, you just cater to anyone? I say both. As a woman, um, I do encourage other people just like me to be out there and be them be their best selves. Um, I do believe in women's rights and, and all of that. So, but I'm also catering to, to anybody, like any gender, it, it don't matter to me. I want my brand to empower you to be the best self version of yourself. 
but a good version of yourself, not not one that goes and offends and insults everybody else. But we, you know, my brand is for everyone. Uh, tell tell us a little bit about your uh, book in a little bit more detail. I mean, I don't want uh, yeah, I don't want to want you to give everything away. No spoiler alerts. You know any of that? Just you know, get to the meat and potatoes. Okay, aggressive, honey, it's assertive. Um, I mean, that that's New England talk for you right there. Like, we come off as a very, like, aggressive, like, in-your-face uh, population of the United States. And um, this is about how you can learn something from us blunt, honest people up in the Northeast and take it and apply it to your life and um, your colloquialism where you're at. So this book just talks about, like, you know, first impressions count. It talks about like, you know, go to your first day of work, like in an iron shirt, make sure you smell nice, make sure you brush your teeth, brush your hair, look presentable because you wouldn't want someone on first impression to be like, I don't trust their work. And they may not um, consciously understand why they don't trust you either. So like, if you make that first impression, it's going to last a long time. But then we also talk in the book, about when I've already made a bad first impression, how do I turn that around? And, you know, we'll go into detail about how you have to build that trust over time and keep doing trial and error to prove to the person. Normally in this case, it's like a boss or maybe it's a family member that doesn't trust you anymore. You have to keep building that trust with those individuals to gain that um, respect over time. So it's, as one of my uh, readers said, it's like a blunt slap in the face that you didn't know you needed is my book. How, how did you come up with the, how did you come up with the title? I mean, it's just New England, like I said before, it's just New England talk right there. Aggressive, honey, it's assertive because New England people are thought of as these really aggressive forward people. So the book is about um, how you can learn something from the really aggressive, honest people from the Northeast and how you can apply it to your colloquialism. Uh, are there like aggressive drivers up there too? No, oh, absolutely. I mean, the, <laughs> the old saying in Boston is if, you know, if you're not driving reckless, you're gonna get hit. So <laughs> maybe that could go with the, the speaking too, but you know, I'm not telling people to go be aggressive drivers on the road. I'm telling people to drive with a purpose. Oh, and that's more than just literally uh, uh, speaking. Uh, uh, you know, that can go literally or figuratively, right? Right. Okay, you know, the drive, you know, the will to succeed, you know, the will to be a better version of yourself. Uh, you know, the drive to be the best person that um, to fulfill your purpose on right. earth. Okay. Don't let uh, people walk all over you. And if you feel people are walking all over you, this is how we approach it. Uh, right. Okay. Um, did I leave anything out? Well, if anyone wants to go so follow me on social media, Jennifer C. Messina is my handle on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, scenaglam.com if you want to buy some of my lip gloss and look into that brand. And also jennifercmessina.com is my main website and everything and everything's on that website. So if you want to go follow me, leave me a message, leave a review. The book is available on Amazon and in Barnes and Noble. So go ahead and give it a shot. Take some advice from a cranky old Northeasterner. Maybe it'll help you in your life. I, I I I like your energy. I mean, it's just like I like your energy, your spirit. It's just like really out there, you know. You you know who you are, you know where your purpose is. You just live in life on purpose. That's right. We're we're living for a purpose, so we're we're moving forward to the pur purpose. But I, I want my fans and I want my supporters to to live that way too. And I hope that what I've done and the hurdles I've gone through and the stories that I share will help make the path a little bit easier for them. 
uh, you uh, did mention where can uh, uh, people find your music. Yes, um, so you can find it on any streaming site. It's on YouTube, it's on Spotify, you can buy it on iTunes, Amazon Music. Um, you can even upload Instagram and Facebook videos and use my audio in the background. So it is wherever there is streaming. Okay, uh, have, have, I mean, have your music ever been heard on the radio? Yeah, it's been on a couple of radio stations. So is it, is it like really difficult to, you know, get your songs played, you know, on the radio? Because we know that the music industry, as it always have been for the last 60, 70 years, has been really competitive. Absolutely. I think one of the biggest things that people miss about the music industry, it's, it's who you know, and sometimes it's how much money you can put down. Um, because you got to look at it like advertisement. Sometimes you put your music in the right place as an advertisement. But it seems like the new method that people are using nowadays is get a TikTok video streaming with your song on it, and people are going to keep using it, and people are going to keep listening to it. And then they're going to listen to it in places other than TikTok. So it's, yes, it's who you know. And, and sometimes it is how much money you have to pay to get something to stream somewhere. But if you make it spread virally, even the, the lowest income musician can make it happen. So, and I, and I think that's, you know, they're, you know, they're going that route, you know, doing like the streaming, you know, services like iTunes or Spotify that seems to, you, you know, to be popular, uh, you know, because I, I think that a lot of times, you know, you know, and I have some people, and I, I'm like that too. Uh, I notice on a lot of radio stations that you get more commercials than you normally would get. You, you know, like in the 70s and 80s, you know, they do like maybe three commercials at the most, and then they're right back, maybe four at the most, and they go right back to the music. But then nowadays, I'm hearing like five minutes worth for a, uh, you know, commercial. I'm like, can y'all get back to the music already? Right. I'm going to get to my destination before I hear another song. Right. Thanks. You know, especially like your morning program. I, I don't like, I don't like listening to these morning programs. Okay. Cause I'm getting ready to go to work. I'm on the road. You know, I want to hear like some upbeat, uplifting music, you know, on my way to work. And all I'm hearing is people talk. Right, I, we I, want some good vibes, some motivation before work. You know, who in the world want to, you know, listen to someone, uh, you know, making a prank call? Come on now. I mean, that that is not original to me, okay? There's you know, a there's, for everybody. Right. You know, some people like it, but, you know, I, I, I don't like those morning shows. You know, they do a whole lot of talking. You don't hear... You don't hear a lot of you don't hear a lot of music, you know. Right. Uh, you know the you know same thing with TV. You know it. You know it used to be a point to where uh, uh, you 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 hear like eight, you see like eight minutes of commercials, but it's like spread out. Mm -hmm. You know nowadays you get a lot more commercials than what you normally, you, you know you normally get, and so the quality of TV you know, is on a decline, you know, almost, you know, identically, uh, you know, radio is, you know, right now, uh, community radio is where it's at. Makes community sense. Ra community radio is where it's at uh, because, um, you know, community radio, uh, you know, an amateur, you, you, you know, can do that. You can be like a part 15, uh, according to FCC, and, you know, as long as you follow, you know, the rules of the FCC, you know, no one will really come after you. Right, I but agree. Also, but also with those smaller stations, you're able to control what kind of content, you know, that you have on there. Um, there was one station locally here, uh, you know, where it's, you know, it's basically Afrocentric, you know, mm -hmm. and they have content on there you know, specifically for them, you know, well, you got your news, uh, you got stuff that, 
you know, educates, uplift, empower. It's a community station. Right. Uh, it, it's it's the niche of the community it's serving, mm -hmm, which is great. Right. It's not trying to impress hundreds and hundreds of community and assimilate. It, it's purposely promoting and giving what that current community wants. Right. And also you got stations where they just play nothing but music. You and know, we love yeah, that. You know, and you got like few commercials. You know, you know, you gotta have some commercials. If you're, you know, a commercial station, you know, you gotta pay the bills. You know, you gotta pay the bills. I you know, I understand that, but uh uh, but it's mostly you know, music. So community radio is where it's at. A lot of independent artists, you know, are having their music play on those community stations. Uh, if you live in a large urban area uh, and you're broadcasting within a three mile radius, you're gonna reach a couple of thousand people. Right. You, you know, on that. So, and also these stations, they also stream online. Uh, and we know if you have an app, that's even better. You know, you can stream your station from an app. Um, that's one uh, way that, and a lot of people are going to those streaming services, you know, like you mentioned, the Spotify's, the iTunes, iHeartRadio, and all those things to uh, have their music, uh, you know, play on there, uh, especially the younger generation. They're, they're downloading those apps, and they listen to the music on those apps. Uh, you know, like me, my attention span to windows real fast when I had to hear five minutes worth of commercials, you know, and I'm waiting for my next song to come on. Right. So, I mean, I, I don't know how you feel about that, but, you know, I hate listening to a radio station where I hear more commercials than I do music. I agree, 100%. It it's just irks my nerves. I'm like especially your morning shows it's just you know I, I had to turn my radio off but but that's the trend that's going on you know right now people are actually uh you know they're saying i don't want to skip the commercials you know i just want to hear some you know some music and so a lot of artists especially independent artists they are definitely taking advantage of that you know because they want to hear the music they don't want to hear uh you know, all these commercials, you know, but right. like I said earlier, if you're a commercial radio station, you know, you got to have some of it, you know, because you got bills to pay, you know, but right. not so much to where, you know, they're like really turned off. I mean, for that, you know, I might was get a subscription to uh, Sirius XM satellite radio because they don't hardly have any commercial. Right. And I mean, they're making their money. They would make an advertisement through your subscription so it, it makes sense yeah yeah so that's kind of like the trend that we're going right now and for example uh a lot of the authors that we had uh by the way this is our fifth season of the author showcase oh congratulations and, and in those five years that the vast majority of the authors that we feature on here are self-published. Yeah. They're, they're self-published. They don't go through the traditional, uh, you know, traditional uh, publishing route, which, you know, a lot of times they'll say, uh, well, you can't have any, we're not accepting unsolicited scripts or you got to have a, a literary agent. And I was like, when I first started writing a book, I was like, what in the world is a literary agent? Right. You know, you know, when I think of a literary agent, I'm thinking about, you know, you know, an actor who has an agent and, you know, they take a percentage, you know, they help me get gigs and all this stuff. And they take like a percentage out of my check. So that's when I think, you know, I think a literary agent, you know, it's the same way. So a lot of people say, well, you know, I'll just do everything myself, go, you know, go independent and keep 100%, you know, what uh, 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 the book sales right in my pocket. It's right, a, keep your money. Yep. It's, it's a trend. You know, it's, it's definitely a trend. Oh, and also another trend 
uh, fault is our podcast. That's, that's another trend that's been going on for the last 10 years. Uh, people are going more and more into podcasting because in podcasting, you know, we can talk about stuff that we can talk about stuff and explore subjects that mainstream media won't even touch. You know, they are like politically correct. And, and that's the same way, you know, with the music industry, you know, unfortunately, the music industry, the mainstream music industry is, uh, you know, say, okay, you know, in order to, you know, make money, you got to talk about this or you got to talk about that. So you're really not free to kind of like, you know, express yourself, you know, in your music. And that's something that I have noticed in the last 10, 15 years you know, as well. So um, again, you know, I know this is a, a podcast about, you know, authors, but this will also apply to, you know, anything associated with that, because really, for example, you are a musician, right? Right. Um, you know, you know, uh, and uh, the word artist is used all the time, mm -hmm. you know, in that because in music, you're basically telling a story. Right? right. Okay. So, so in telling the story, it's, in, it's not in book form. You're, you're singing out, you know, your story. It's kind of like uh, an audio book, you know, where you hear people, uh, you know, saying 30,000 words. Of course, I won't do that. <laughs> you know, I won't huh. do that. But nevertheless, you 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 just singing out your story. It's like it's like an audio book, but it's better. Right. It's like an audio book, but it's you know it's better. So, uh, yeah, I, I know I said a lot, but uh, that's the trend that we are seeing, and of course, that is what we are trying to you know, to bring out here. And that's why we get like different artists, book artists from all walks of life. Because uh, like I said earlier, when I first started this podcast is that everyone has a story to tell. Right. Um, someone may have, um, you know, stronger language, you know, you know than others. Uh, but they do have a story. And however they want to express themselves or how they'll be able to relate to their audit, audience, we try to promote that here. You know, and so, you know, with you, it's, it's, it's no different. Um, I don't think no two artists is alike. You know, everybody, you know, brought something different, you know, to the table. And that's what makes this podcast a success. You that know, makes Yes, that's what makes it, you know, a success. And so that's why, you know, we don't bring in, we usually don't go after the top names, you, you know, uh, you know, unless we just stumble across, you know, somebody. But that's rare. You, you know, you know, you know, that's rare. Uh I, you though, is the word common folks? Is is an appropriate term to use here? You know, I consider myself to be a common person, you know, that I, you know, that I'm able to relate to, you know, most people. I get what you're trying to say. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. Um, well, we're going to get ready to wrap it up here. Um, certainly thank you for, you know, taking the time to uh, share you and share your story. And you've already mentioned where they can find you. Um, yeah. Jennifer C. Messina, jennifercmessina.com on Facebook, Instagram, Google, um, whatever search engine you'd like to use, Jennifer C. Messina, that's my brand. You can find my book on Barnes Nobles or Amazon, Kindle. Um, you can get printed copies, paper, and hardcover. 
you can find my lip glosses on Amazon. You can find them on Etsy. You can find them on our website. So jennifercmessina.com. Um, would you like to share some last words? It can be words of wisdom. It can be words of encouragement. You know, any, anything. I would say the last chapter of my book is called Let Your Freak Flag Fly. And the purpose of that chapter and why it ends the book is be 100%, be 100 yourself and be 100% authentic to you. I was, I was just, uh, you know, thinking, of, I was just thinking about that. You, I don't know, you guess you read my mind. It was uh, one of the things that I am highly, you know, promote is transparency. You know, being who you are, being 100% authentic. Uh, I try to live that every single day. Uh, so... Uh, you're not alone in that chapter. You know, I am definitely there. So her last word is be 100% authentic. Because people would, you know, people can tell when you're real and when you're not. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, gotta be real, gotta be honest. Yep, yeah, I'm quite sure that I'm quite sure that your book covers that. Absolutely, all 11 chapters. All 11 chapters. Okay, well, we're going to close out here. Um, you know, and I love dealing with and talking to, you know, people that are real. You know, even though, you know, even when it hurts. You know, I think that that would help, you know, make, uh, you know, us better people if, you know, we're getting, if we're being, uh, and, you know, sometimes you have to be that way. I think that would make us a better person that makes us more accountable. Uh, right. So you continue to do what you do and uh, best wishes on, on what you're doing now and what you plan on doing in the future. Thank and you. I appreciate it. You too. Um, did, um, is there anything that you left out that you want to say? Nope, I'm good. Okay. Uh, well, Jennifer, you know, we appreciate you being on here today and uh, keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. All righty. And this is uh, the Author Showcase. I'm Keith Williams your host, and be sure to be with us on next Saturday, where we will have another exciting author and another story that needs to be told. So we hope that you will turn in to us on next Saturday. Until then, enjoy your weekend.